Good. Oh, sorry. Let me remove this. Oh, good morning. Can you hear me well? I hope you're all well, and I hope that we are using our face mask while you're going out. And again, we are sanitizing whenever we go out and come in because the government, or not even the government, we are supposed to do that because of what is going on right now. Thank you so much. I have my face mask and I have my sanitizer. I hope everyone is doing good and I hope you're excited on this new day. I am so excited that the Lord has woken me up very fresh. I feel so good. I feel so energetic and I can't wait to hear the lesson for today. I hope that you've been doing what the teachers have been asking. Do you remember the memory verse for last week? Would you whisper it to someone next to you? Oh, if you don't remember it, kindly go back to our published, our published lessons and go through the memory verse. So today is yet a new day for us and we're excited to have each and every one of you who's watching us online. We are grateful to what God is doing to our lives and we are grateful that God has kept us well. As we want to start our lesson today, I hope you have your notebook, your biro, and you have your Bible so that you can go through what the teacher is teaching you today. And before that, before we pray, remember to give on our pay bill number, which is written on the screen, 567-935. The pay bill number again is 567-935. I'll encourage you to remove your savings if you have your savings. Or if not, so if daddy or mommy or someone that is elder than you that is there, ask them to help you send this money and God will reward you. God will bless you. So, shall we pray? Let's put our hands together and bow our head for out of prayer. Father Lord, we are thankful for this morning that you've kept us well. We pray that, Lord Jesus, that you'll be with us as we start our lesson. May you be with each and every child that is not able to come to church, but they're watching us on online. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray this, trusting and believing. Amen and amen. I hope by the end of the lesson, you'll get something that you want to tell your brother, your sister, or anyone that is there with you. Hope you'll enjoy the lesson. Bye-bye and see you. Thank you. My name is Leyan Bicha. I represent Rockers. Kwame, this is Kwame Bicha. I represent Six Niners. And this is Sankara who represents Toddlers. So Kwame, you're going to pray for us. So I'm gonna sing a song called Alpha and Omega. I know many of you love it, so sing it after me. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all thy glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. <clears throat> we give you all thy glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Hello. Good morning and praise the Lord. I'm happy to see all of you boys and girls. I believe you are tuned in and welcome to our today's online service. And before we start, let's bow down for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for being together with us for all those days and keeping us safe. And thank you for protecting us even in this season of COVID-19. We thank you and we love you. We welcome you to be together with us in our today's lesson. And it is in Jesus' name that we do pray and believe. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. I believe we are tuned in for our today's service. And now, before we start, I want to remind us that Teacher Christine taught us last week on the fifth beatitude about being merciful. But today, I want us to get into our today's uh, beatitude, that is beatitude number six, that says, I believe you have your Bible. Uh, if you don't have your Bible, ask your mom, ask your dad, ask your guardian, because today we are going to read from the book of Matthew, 
chapter number uh, 5 and verse 8. And we are reading the, fifth, the sixth beatitude that says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Again, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I believe all of us, as we live in this life, at some point, we will want to go to heaven and we want to see God. But before we get there, the Bible is telling us that we want to have, we must have pure hearts so that when we live a pure life here on earth, God is waiting for us in heaven. Amen? And before we continue, I would like to just illustrate how a pure heart and an unpure heart looks like. Amen? Boys and girls, just look at me. I have two bottles of water. This bottle indicates a pure heart. That tells me that your heart is so clean, you don't have bad things in your heart. And this bottle is that heart that is unpure, that is contaminated, that is dirty. So I want us to learn today how to have pure hearts. I want us to know that as boys and girls who love God, God is expecting us to have a pure heart. How do we have a pure heart? Having a pure heart is by inviting Jesus Christ in your heart, and then he cleans your heart. When he cleans your heart, you start thinking the light things. You start thinking on how you can help your mommy. You start thinking on how you can help your friends. You start thinking on doing those things that are good. That is a person who have a clean heart and a pure heart. When you have a pure heart too, you will also be saying things that are pure. You don't abuse your friends, like telling them bad things, like telling them you don't look good, like telling them you don't have this. You will speak, you will be speaking things that are pure. And I believe all of us, we want to see God. And so if you want to see God, start now, start practicing now. Even when you are a young child like that, I've said the first thing is you think good things, then your heart will be pure. Two, I have said you start speaking and saying things that are good, then your heart will be pure. The third thing we should do is to act light. Our actions, they should be pure. They should be light. Don't go out there beating your friends, harassing your friends, taking people's things. Those things, boys and girls, they make our hearts unpure, unpure as this water. But if you do the light things, you only do those light things like leading your Bible, helping your parents, and doing those things that are pleasing God and are making your parents, your guardians to be happy, then your heart will be as pure as this, uh, as this water. So boys and girls, I'm encouraging us this morning that we should have pure hearts because the Bible has told us when we have pure hearts, we will at some point go to heaven and we will see God. So I'm encouraging us this morning, think the light things, do the light things, and talk the light things. And that way, we live a pure life. And that is what the Bible is telling us. And so I believe as you start this week, you'll be doing things that are pure and completely pure. But before we finish, I want us to get to our memory verse of the day. And our memory verse comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 12. And it says, be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. I repeat again, mem memory verse of the day, Matthew chapter 5, verse 12, be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. Boys and girls, I believe you will keep on memorizing that verse, and I believe that God is going to help you to live a pure heart. But as I said as I was starting, that to have a pure heart, you have to invite Christ in your heart, and he will clean your heart, and you'll be clean, and God will be able to use you. You see, when you ha your heart is clean, you'll be, you'll be used by God like this water. I can use it to drink because it is pure. So even you, I want us this morning to invite Christ. If you are there, you are with mommy, you are with daddy, you are alone. I want us to repeat this prayer as we invite Christ 
to help us. Maybe that week you've been doing things that are not right. But I want us this morning that we invite Christ because the Bible has told us it's only Christ who can clean our hearts. Our mommies cannot, our daddies cannot, our guardians, our aunties, they cannot be able to clean our hearts. The only person who is able to clean our hearts, it is God, it is Jesus Christ. And so I want us to read, you with our, uh, to read uh, this prayer that we invite Christ, that he'll come into our hearts and clean our hearts. So shall we bow down and pray as we invite Christ to clean our hearts. If you are there and you have been doing bad things, just tell God, God, I've been beating my friends, I've been talking bad things, I've been stealing some items of my friends, the toys and that, and God, now I want to confess that I've been doing those things, but now I want to confess, and I want you, God, to forgive me and clean my heart and make it pure. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you because we know that you know us. And you know everything that you have been doing. This morning we are praying that if we have been doing bad things that has made our hearts unclean, we pray that forgive us this morning and clean our hearts and make our hearts pure for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Now, thank you boys and girls. We are still continuing with our beehive. And as uh, we are seeing, now we have completed the beehive, the beatitude number six that says pure, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Thank you so much. We'll continue and God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hello everyone. My name is Jakinda. Welcome to today's Sunday service. Hope you enjoy. Let's pray. Heavenly mighty Father, I come before you this morning. I thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for protecting our families and every single person we know, mighty Lord. God, I'd like to ask you to touch your healing hand upon in the sick people for oh, they will be healed, oh mighty Lord. And let us go back to our normal life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you, wonderful children of God? Are you okay? Well, I am fine, and I am so happy once again to be here so that we continue learning the word of God. You remember what Jesus said? That you cannot live by bread alone, but also by the word that comes from God. So today we continue with the lessons about the beautiful attitudes. Or the B attitudes. Are we together? So, as usual, I have my Bible. Do you have yours? I have my note. I have my notes. I've written. You, you need a pen and a notebook. So you know that. I know you have them ready. So, can we start our lesson? Well, thank you very much for inviting me into your homes and listening to me. So, we are going to read about the B attitudes. B. Attitudes. Those are two words joined together, isn't it? Attitudes that we are supposed to be like. All right? So these attitudes that are good and are beautiful, we find them in the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1 and up to verse 12. And we are going to read the word of God because it is important to read the word of God. And I want us to go together. Are you ready? I'm giving you one minute to be ready and to have everything ready. Are you ready now? Good. Let us start. The B attitudes. Now, when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Now, something else that I would like to tell you children is that this sermon in chapter number 5 of the book of Matthew is called the Sermon on the Mountain or Sermon on the Mount. It is the longest sermon that is recorded that Jesus gave at one, at one time. So it is not just about the Beatitudes and it stops there. It actually goes all the way, all the way up to chapter 7 with Jesus teaching and telling people and telling the people who had come to listen to them to him. And I know we know that. So we are talking about the sermon on the mount. And Jesus started with the first thing that was about 
our attitudes. Why? Because our attitudes are very important in the way we relate with everybody else, the way we relate with our parents, the way we relate with our friends, the way we relate with our teachers. Attitude is the most important thing. And for me, the B attitudes are also refer them to the beautiful attitudes. So let us continue. Uh, chapter 5, verse 1, part B. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay? We are going to go through them because we know as we repeat the word of God, it gets into our hearts and it helps us in our day-to-day -day life, even as we go to our beatitude of the day. So blessed are the pure in spirit. What do you think Jesus was saying when he was saying that blessed are the pure in spirit? Do you think it is because now if you're pure in spirit, you're so poor, you don't have spirit? I don't think so. What it meant was that your spirit is ready for Jesus to teach you anything. That you're, you're, you're free. That you have opened your heart to the Holy Spirit of God. Because when you are born again, remember the Holy Spirit of God is living inside of you and helping you day by day. So verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Okay. Mourn. About what? You know we mourn when we lose our, our friends, ama our loved ones. I don't know whether you understand that. But I think here what, uh, what uh, the, the Lord was teaching people is that if you're sorry about maybe things that you've done, you know, you're not a bully, you're not a don't care, that you go out there and you hurt people and you continue with life. In fact, you laugh. Have you met those people when they hurt you, they laugh? Eh? Me, I have met them in school and they can make your life so miserable. Do not be like them. Verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. That's another beautiful attitude. Being meek. Mm -hmm. And what do you think it means to be meek? Being meek is a humble person. And do you know, actually, God described one of his servants as being meek. Do you remember who it was? Moses. You remember that story? God said that he was the most meek person in the world. Imagine God looking at you and seeing your attitude is so good. Baka, he's able to talk about it. Hmm? So, another beatitude, verse 6, is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Yani you, you're just thirsting to do good things for people. Hmm? You know, even in where we interact, even in our classes, we know there are those people who are just ready to help. There's that one person when they come with their snacks, they're going to share with everybody. There's that person when the teacher says something, they're the first ones to do. You know, you're filled with, you're, you're, you're so eager to do the right thing. The Bible says that one, that attitude, God is going to fill you. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Wow. Hmm? Merciful. Which story can we relate to about mercy? Hmm? What about the good Samaritan who was able to help the, the, the person who was injured? He was merciful. What about you? Are you merciful? Hmm? Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And that is our verse today. That is the beautiful attitude that we are learning about today. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, I don't know how we can be pure by ourselves, but we can be pure by allowing the Holy Spirit to live within us. That you have got nothing that is causing you to think, well, now, what does my mother think of me? If I were to tell them I did A, B, C, D, what would they, what would they think of me? But when you have that feeling in, inside of your heart that maybe you're not okay. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to speak it out. Hmm? Let me give you an example. Maybe you have done something wrong, you know? Maybe you, you, you took somebody else's something, maybe in class, maybe at home, and here they are looking all over for it. Have you seen my pen? Have you seen my rubber? Have you seen my shoes who are here? Who has taken them? Maybe in the house. And you, you know it's you. And you're just keeping quiet. And you're just telling yourself, I'm not going to tell you. 
And then you know your heart will just feel in your heart like things are not okay, things are not okay. You know, at that time, something has gone wrong. How do you write it? How do you write it? Even if you know you're going to be punished for that something that you did that was not right, when you speak about it, it purifies your heart. It makes you feel that you're okay again and you're clean again. And you know what? We are told that all of us are sinners. There is nobody who is not a sinner. That's what the Bible tells us, that all of us have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So you will sin at one point. How do you keep yourself pure? By confessing to you, to the person you've wronged and also to God. The Bible tells us if we confess our sins to God and to one another, God is able to forgive us and he will not remember. Do you remember David? He's one of the best servants that we read about in the Bible. But many are the times that he fell into doing bad things. But what would he do? He would go to God genuinely with a contrite heart and, uh, and really cry out to God. And God would forgive him. And what does God say about David? He says, a man after my own heart. You see? So it is not about that you will not fall into, into situations where you've not done, where you've done, when, when it is not like you, you're going just to be pure throughout your life. You will always fall into things and temptations that will lead you away from the goodness of God. But when you go to God and you confess and you say, I am sorry, and you say, I'm not going to repeat this again, God is able to forgive your sins and he's able to put you once again into the right, into the right uh, place with him. Are we together, children? Now, for the sake of finishing our reading, let us go on to the book of, uh, uh, let us go on to the, to verse number nine. So the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. That one actually is very easy to understand. Peacemaker, what are you? Are you the peace creator? Am I the peacemaker? So if you are the peacemaker, God says that you're going to be called a child of God. Okay, because in this world, there are so many things to, to, to just disturb our peace. Even right now, where we are, when we are at home, you know, like me in my house, I usually see everybody has something they want to watch on TV, you know? So, anakuta, anakuta, me, this one is watching whatever it is. So, the, the brother comes, changes, hides the, re, the remote. Now, there is, all of a sudden, there is no peace. But then there is one, that, child, that one child will come and, and tell them, no, 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 no. Let us go do it like this. And you become a peacemaker. When you find maybe children, am I your friends? They are fighting. And you get in and you tell them to stop fighting. You become a peacemaker. Remember that. And you become who? A child of God. Number, verse number 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Because theirs, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is a very important attitude. That when you are born again, not everybody will like it. Not everybody will want to be your friend. What are you going to do? Ama, are you born again only on Sunday when you're coming to church and when you're out there with your friends? Because you don't want to be seen like you. You're not part of the crew. You're doing everything they are doing. And right now, like right now when we are, going, we are not going to school, we have a lot of free time maybe. What do you do with your time? How do you... How do, you, how do you interact with your friends when they come over to visit you at your place? Do you show them, Yani, you, you're the baddest one, tired, Yani, so eh, whatever it is they are doing, even you, you're doing. Ama, do you stick with your attitude, a Christ-like attitude of being, uh, doing the right thing? That way, you are going to inherit the kingdom of, of heaven. Okay, children? Now, our lesson, here it is. In summary, we have a beehive here. We have the first attitude is this one. Blessed are you if you're pure, if you're, if you're poor in the spirit. Blessed are you if you mourn. Blessed are you if you're meek or humble. Blessed are you if you hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are you if you're merciful. Blessed are you if you're pure in heart. What do you choose today, children? What do you choose today? Do you choose to do the things that are good? Do you choose to have a beautiful attitude? Do you choose to have a, 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 an attitude the way Christ is describing here so that you are blessed, so that you are blessed? Remember that we have said that these attitudes, they are the attitudes that will give you blessings. And we, when you have these blessings, you become happy and you become fulfilled so that even when there are things you're not having in your life, 
you are still happy, you are still fulfilled. Are we together, my friends, boys and girls? Now, there are many things that, 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 that you can do to know and to be sure that you have a beautiful attitude. And an attitude is the way you relate to people. Never forget that. It is the way that you relate to people. Let people see you with a good attitude, with a beautiful attitude, so that you stay blessed. All right? Thank you very much. Now, I want to just ask you one question. Can you clean your own heart? You cannot clean your own heart. So how do you make it clean? Confessing and allowing Jesus Christ to stay in your life. How is that? Day by day, day by day, day by day. You remember to confess your sins. Before we go, we have our memory verse of the day. Now, I hope you have all the other memory verses you've written. And we keep saying that the Bible says what? Let the word of God stay richly in your heart. So our memory verse of the day, where does it come from today? It comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 12. What does it say? Be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. Is that hard? It is not hard. Can we say together? Matthew chapter 5, verse 12. What does it say? Be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. Thank you very much for listening to me. Remember to tell your friends that you're learning the Bible online so that they can also have beautiful attitudes like you. And I know when we meet next time, you're going to be beaming with a good and a beautiful attitude. Can we pray? Can we pray so that we finish our lesson? Father, we want to thank you once again this wonderful morning that we are here to hear from you to understand what you want us to be. And today you are teaching us how important it is to have a pure heart, O oh God, so that we may see you. And I know all of us, we want to see you. I want to see you. And I know all the children who are listening, and even the ones who are not listening, we want to see you. Thank you, Lord. Help us to stay with a pure heart all the time, Jehovah, King of all glory. I want to thank you for all the children, wherever they are. Lord, in these times of COVID, we declare goodness, good health, protection from the people who are around them, oh God. We declare that all of them shall be safe and that none of our children shall fall sick. None of our children shall go, uh, shall, shall go hungry. Lord, none of our children shall be mistreated. All of the children, Lord, for the Bible tells us you love children. Children, all of the children, Lord, they are going to be safe, oh God. We thank you and we bless you. We thank you for our sanctuary, even for making these lessons available for us that we may continue hearing from you. Lord, we pray that you may bless them. We thank you and we bless you. For it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen.